Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Wednesday, April the 16th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, FBI documents prove the agency is profiling U.S. gun owners. Then, NATO announces it will deploy on Russia's border. And more on the Bundy Ranch. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Pillars in the in the community, bunch of you know nice people, but in America they have a hunger to literally put us in jail. Well, in confirmation of what we've been telling you for years, Homeland Security and the massive security state, the Patriot Act, is not there to protect us against Al Qaeda. It's to protect the government from people who think that it's too big. We have a story today from Paul Joseph Watson. The FBI is visiting gun shops to investigate, quote, people who are talking about big government. Now, this is Brandon Turbeville, and he was approached by an individual who works in a Columbia, South Carolina gun shop. Told him a story about how the FBI entered his store on Monday and said, told the gun worker that he was tasked with visiting all the local firearm outlets in the area to check on, quote, suspicious purchases for counterterrorism purposes. The agent then began discussing what actual facts were completely normal transaction. The agent then began discussing what an actual fact were completely normal transactions, things like paying with cash or purchasing long guns, things like that. But this is the key quote here. He said, if you see some Middle Eastern guy come in, you don't have to be so worried about that. What we're really looking for are people who are talking about being sovereign such as sovereign citizens or people who are talking about big government. This is what we've been telling you for a long time. This was exposed in the MIAC report of 2009. They were telling law enforcement officers that the people they had to be concerned with were people who had bumper stickers on their cars for candidates like Ron Paul or Bob Barr. This is what they're doing with the no hesitation targets where they show people who are just ordinary American citizens. This is why they're buying billions of rounds of ammunition. And notice that what they're talking about is people who are saying that they think government is too large, but also this key word about sovereign citizen. This came up in Glenn Beck's interview with Cliven Bundy about the Nevada ranch standoff. And we're gonna have more on that later in a special report. That is a key word to get law enforcement trained to recognize that as someone that is an immediate threat to their life someone who is a domestic terrorist. Again, the term sovereign citizen is a very dangerous label to hang on somebody. It has a very particular meaning to law enforcement, and we're gonna be showing you that report right after the break. Now, Bloomberg is saying that he thinks he's got his way set to go to heaven based on gun control. He says, I've earned my place in heaven and it's not even close. The New York Times reported Tuesday that because he's going to spend $50 million of his estimated $31 billion fortune, he thinks that he's going to go straight to heaven. He said, I'm telling you, if there is a God, if. When I go to heaven, I'm not stopping to be interviewed. I'm going, heading straight in. I've earned my place in heaven. It's not even close. That's about the most pathetic, self-righteous God complex thing I've ever seen. And unfortunately, we should feel sorry for him. He doesn't understand that no one earns their way into heaven, and he also obviously doesn't understand that there's a God. And of course, he's only giving 0.1% of his fortune for this, but it's still a very large amount. Look at this. The $50 million commitment, however, takes his anti-gun advocacy to the next level. By comparison, the Times reports that the NRA spent less than half that much on its gun rights advocacy last year. So one billionaire here is going to spend twice as much as the NRA did last year. Now, Ron Paul is telling the IRS that he's not going to provide information they want. You know, the IRS is, thinks they're God too. They want to be omniscient and as well as omnipotent. They want to know everything about everybody. Ron Paul's nonprofit Campaign for Liberty will fight the IRS's demand that it reveal its donor list, despite having already been fined for refusing to do so. Megan Stiles said there is no legitimate reason for the IRS to know who donates to the Campaign for Liberty. And Ron Paul wrote, paying this outrageous extortionist fine just to exercise our rights as American citizens to petition our government may be cheaper in the short run, but it'll just embolden the alphabet soup of other federal agencies to come after us. Now, the Campaign for Liberty pointed out that the IRS can require that information, but the reason they don't want to give it out is because historically the IRS has mistakenly 
released that information and made it public. And usually they do so to the opponents of the conservative groups. This is part of what we've seen from the IRS's political activism, the fact that they've targeted Tea Party groups and the fact that they have in the past released the information of conservative groups to these to their very opponents. Now we see something very dangerous going on in Russia now. NATO is announcing that it will deploy on Russia's border. This is an amazing escalation. Imagine if the Russians amassed on the Canadian and Mexican borders. Imagine if they started to put missiles in Cuba, for example. Would we see that as a threat? Would that be seen as provocative? Would that bring us to a very dangerous World War situation? That's what we are doing now in Russia. We have now become the aggressors. In the story from Kurt Nemo, he writes, NATO boss Anders Rasmussen has announced military alliance will move troops to the Russian border in response to resistance by Eastern Ukrainians. Now, this is interesting because there's some small country called Transnistria that's on the, on the Moldova-Ukraine border Kind of sounds like the Archduke Ferdinand and some Serbian assassin. We should not underestimate the fact that very obscure areas, places that we don't think are very large or very important, can trigger world wars. That's what happened with World War I. Now, these people passed a resolution unanimously saying that they wanted independence. And now NATO is moving to the border in an escalation of that situation. Now, in other news, Bank of America is in settlement talks over mortgage security fraud. Now, they've already been fined in the past quite a bit of money, and now another fine is coming out. So they did not make their quarterly profits. They actually had a loss because of these legal issues. Bank of America is engaged in a multi-million dollar settlement talk with the Justice Department to end investigations into shoddy residential mortgage-backed securities. It isn't clear how big a settlement will be. But they have incurred an extra $2.4 billion in legal expenses. They've already settled a number of mortgage-related disputes with the government, including a $9.3 billion deal last month with the Federal Housing Finance Agency. Well, as many of you know, I was at the Nevada Bundy Ranch, the standoff that happened last Saturday. We see an article today from Judge Napolitano that he's fearful of what's coming next at the Bundy Ranch. I'm fearful about how Glenn Beck is playing this. We saw how controlled, how calm, how steady the Bundy family was. They were asking people not to even bring weapons there on our side. And so what Glenn Beck and other people are doing is they're trying to make it sound as if there's a large Yahoo constituency there, people who are reckless, who are trying to provoke a confrontation with the BLM. That is not what happened. The entire week, the BLM was pointing sniper rifles at unarmed people. And you know what? After you see people pointing guns at you for a long time, you kind of lose your fear of that. And that was what was happening there at that gathering, where we were going to stand them down. It's the most beautiful thing I've seen since the Civil Rights Movement. And for him to sully this, for these quizlings like Glenn Beck and others to make it into something that it isn't, listen, we were threatened by the BLM. We were not threatening the BLM. You can see that it is not true what Glenn Beck was saying. Listen to what he said this morning. The guys that were on the horseback, they all seemed totally cool. It was the people at the gates that I've had a hard time with. It's, some, it's that sheriff, that retired sheriff that was saying, we put people, we, we, we specifically, we war-gamed it. We put women and children in front. So if there was uh, somebody that was going to be killed, it would be the women that would be killed, and that would be on TV. So today, Glenn Beck has David Barton, and the two of them know somebody who knows somebody who they say was there. I was there. And we did not have a situation where we put women in front. You can see this from a video that I'm going to show you in just a second. That was from a retired sheriff who wasn't even there. He admitted that he didn't get to the area until after it was all over. I was at the demonstration area when Mr. Bundy was talking to the sheriff, when the sheriff came and read the BLM press release. And from that time until the time he said, I'm not giving anybody any orders except for the sheriff and for the governor who are not doing their duties, but we're going to go get our cattle back. And if you want to go, you can follow us. That was all that was said. There wasn't any gaming strategy about putting women in front. And there wasn't anybody provoking anything except for the BLM who set up martial law in that area to collect a civil fine. Now, take a look at this picture that we've got here. Does this look like an angry mob? Are these armed people? They're holding their hands in the air. They're holding flags as they walk forward. And you'll see right here in just a moment, 
the crowd will move forward. This is going to be, I want you to see this unedited so that you know the lies and the disinformation that Glenn Beck is feeding to people. It's the duty of people like Glenn Beck to create a provocative element so he can manufacture in people's minds that there's a bunch of yahoos out there, a bunch of people who are stirring this up. It's not credible whatsoever that the Bundys would do something provocative. He's a Ron Paul kind of character. So they have to say that there are going to be elements in there so that if the, if the government moves against these people and kills a bunch of people, they can always say, well, of course, it wasn't the Bundys. It was other people who were in the crowd. This is what happened. People calmly moved forward. It was a civil rights demonstration. If you think this is about a welfare rancher, you don't understand what's going on. This is a civil rights movement. We have to stand down this out of control, brutal government that enacted martial law, that shut down free speech, created free speech areas, attacked anybody who set foot on public land. They came forward, they talked to them, they gave their demands, they were firm and resolute, they did not threaten anyone. What Glenn Beck is telling you is a lie. And I don't care how many people he says he has there, I was there. If he and David Barton say something else, I'm sorry I was there. You can see the video footage. You can see that this is not an angry mob. You can see that they're not pointing any guns. What Glenn Beck and the mainstream media are trying to sell you is the idea that the BLM was responsible and the protesters were out of control. We were standing there peacefully. We walked up to the gate peacefully. We talked to them peacefully. They were the ones who all week had been attacking people with tasers, with canines, walking up and grabbing a weak, frail woman from behind and throwing her to the ground. They are the ones who created this martial law situation. They are not acting reasonably. We have to take our government back and we can do it if we get together and we act peacefully, but people have to stand together. That was what was so encouraging about this event. And I'm not going to see Glenn Beck lie about this without being opposed. Now, Jakari Jackson's got a report right after the break about the biggest hackers in the world, and that would be the U.S. government. That's what Aaron Schwartz told us before he died. And stay tuned, because in the last section, I'm going to talk more about this label of sovereign citizen and how Glenn Beck is trying to hang that on Clive and Bundy, as well as many other dangerous ideas and the legal issues involved in this. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Blocket Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own Detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at Info.